Hello folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraben, you here for another legacy video. Today's video is sponsored by Cardsphere.com as well as Moxfield.com, and we'll take a look at them later in this video. Eth S, Eth S sent me an interesting deck list idea. What if we play Shoulder the Apocalypse, a card near and dear to my heart, alongside Sylvan Library, which allows you to draw two extra cards a turn? Shouldred will kind of gain you that life, offsetting the extra damage that you would take from drawing cards with Library, uh, which ultimately is a pretty cute interaction, and essentially is a black-green version of something that the Uro decks have been doing for a long time. Eth's original deck list had Abrupt Decay in the main deck as the other green card. I'm not really sure that Abrupt Decay is a good card in Legacy anymore, because, spoilers, it misses Murktide Regent, and removal spells that miss Murktide Regent need to be so, so good in order to be playable. Um, you can go a little bit deeper in terms of, like, this whole Sylvan Library card draw with Shouldred synergy. You know, you can play Anvil of the Garden and maybe a, a Curse of Fool's Wisdom, but I think ultimately you, you just need to play enough good cards that can win the game. And so replacing some of Keith's initial jank, we have new jank. We have good old Reggie, Rotting Regisaur, which is just a very, very powerful turn one play if you have a Chrome Mox and Ancient Tomb opener, as well as Opposition Agent, which has the potential of locking your opponent out of the game if they are reliant on fetch lands. Um, the original version had a full playset of Turok. I think if you're going to be playing Ancient Tomb, and especially if you're going to try to mess around with a couple of extra green sources, you can't really run a playset of those alongside all of these other black black pips. Um, and it may just be like, since this deck is so light on actual things that want green mana, that we can get by on the, on the bayous. Um, but... I don't want to get a round or two into this league and go like, man, I really wanted this forest in case my first Sylvan library got countered and then like not have access to it. Um, so we'll we'll see how much of these kind of damage my mana base. Like the ancient tombs aren't free, but I think that risk is pretty mitigated. I do think these two are rough. Um, the Yavimaya helps with the endgame Lice loss of Ancient Tomb, as does the Urborg, and the Urborg smooths out a couple of these things, not innately tapping for black. As far as the sideboard goes, we have eight slots dedicated to the Leyline of the Void Helm of Obedience combo, and most of the rest of the sideboard is just kind of flexible cards that can come in in a whole bunch of matchups. Um, we're kind of hoping that the game one has enough game versus various decks that we don't need to specialize too, too much. Um, and with that being said, let's just jump directly into casting some Shouldreds because that card is so fun. If you're new here, please consider subscribing if you like what you see. And if you're a regular, throw me a like before this video begins. It's the easiest way to support my content for free. If you find yourself in the financial position to support me, please consider joining my Patreon, becoming a YouTube member, or doing a donation deck list. All right, let's battle. My first opening hand here just does not have functional mana. Double Horborg, huh? There's only two of those in the deck. That's rough. That probably means this hand isn't keepable, um, which is super unfortunate. What about this one? This hand's pretty good. This is a five. I'll probably get rid of my forest here. And probably the sudden edict. It's a little unclear to me what the second one is supposed to be. Okay. What are we looking at? Forest into Elvish Reclaimer. 100% interested in casting an opposition agent. I think I don't fuck around. I think I just cast it now. Because it's so awkward if my opponent just, like, plays a land, passes the turn, and then I don't use this, like, Dark Ritual to fuel the opposition agent. Um, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and go in on this at sorcery speed rather than try to get cute and catch my opponent with their metaphorical pants down. All right. Ooh, ooh, ooh no. Elven Safekeeper. 
Fiend Artisan. Okay. The good news is, Opposition Agent slaps here. The bad news is, my opponent scares me. Alright, I have stripped an Endurance from their hand. So, the stuff that's on board is the stuff that I have to deal with. As long as this Fiend Artisan can stay in, sorry, as long as this Opposition Agent can stay in play so that neither of these cards, like, really, really, really do their thing, I'm relatively safe. Um, it's just really awkward because I can't ever block this Elvish Reclaimer because my opponent could sacrifice lands to just immediately grow it. I think I'm going to take this hit here and try to work towards a world where I kick Turok. Ooh, okay. We're, we're seeing the, uh, the toolboxy aspect of these Fiend Artisan Elves decks right now. All right. I play another one of these. And then unfortunately it requires triple black to kick this, so even though I have the appropriate amount of mana, I don't have the appropriate types of mana. I only have black, black, black currently. Not black, 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 colorless. Yeah, so I think this is a very awkward time where, like, my opponent essentially gets to just attack in with these two twos for free, and I can't really crack back. And I also can't attack because of the Sylvan Safekeeper line. I mean... Reggie's not bad here. Reggie's not explicitly good either, but Reggie's certainly not bad. Yeah, I just can't ever endanger opposition agent in combat when there's any chance that shenanigans could happen. Um, okay. That only works with this, by the way. And now my rotting Regisaur can't really attack because of wirewood bounce, um, which is a little awkward. This is pretty good, though. And Urborg. Absolutely doing some work here. This may have the un unintended consequence of growing Fiend Artisan. Uh, it did not. Nice. Taking that natural order is very good. Um, is this attack fine? This attack's probably fine. Just force the Elvish... It doesn't, it doesn't accomplish anything, though. My opponent can still play just about anything that they draw. Like, once I'm attacking with multiple creatures, it's a different story. Um, but I think my plan is just, like, find something like a Douthy Voidwalker and chip my opponent to death that way. All right. We're chilling. This is an incredibly awkward game. Like, this is almost a, like, comedic board stall. Okay, that's fine. All right, Reggie makes me discard a card, but I don't have a card. Uh, yeah, whatever. Having lands is miserable. Everything produces a billion colors. So I have to just watch out for my opponent randomly, like, drawing a Crater Hoof. Or I guess a Green Sun. Three, six, seven, eight. Oh no, Green Sun's not scary. Uh, that's fine, I'll cast that eventually. By eventually, I mean probably at my opponent's end step. Uh-huh. These Fiend Artisans are going to grow up as I cast removal. Which is definitely a thing that is awkward. Oh, the Wirewood is going. Means my attacks are slightly better than they were a second ago. That's a Reggie. I don't know how conservative to be in terms of, like, attacks and such here. I'm going to err on the side of very conservative. Because, like, this can become a 3-4 at instant speed. Each one of these Fiend Artisans is going to grow each time a creature goes to my opponent's graveyard as well. Okay, sure, that's fine. Ah, Douthy Voidwalker. Where, I, I can't always yield to these for future purposes. Oh, -ho. yeah. Sylvan Library is real hot here. So Sylvan Library lets me dig for, like, the Douthy Voidwalker or the Shouldred that will kind of bust this board open. Once Upon a Time is fine. Note, Once Upon a Time is not a search. It is a look at another Elvish Reclaimer. That's also fine. Okay. Also scary. Uh, opponent actually doesn't have that many Elves. These become 5-5s? Five 
that's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Oh, that's Shuldred. I don't think I'm interested in these other cards yet. Not at the cost of life. Alright, there's a Shuldred, which does have Death Touch. And we're chilling. So this Shuldred is going to start doing some serious work. A little unfortunate that my opponent has so many different creature types, so like the plague engineers aren't nearly as potent against this version of elves as as against other versions. <laughs> All right, this is absolutely just the math is for blockers situation, huh? All right, so these all can become five fives. So I'd like to put rotting regisaurs in front of elves. This gets plus two, plus two, as long as the land happens, so that is actually an even larger creature. All the combat damage is done simultaneously. I can kill a Fiend Artisan like this. Uh, I don't know if I can put that Opposition Agent in front of anything other than... No, I can't even put it in front of that. I can put it in front of this. Do this. If I do that, plus five fives. Uh, this can be a very, very large amount of damage if my opponent fetches. Maybe I have to throw away the Shouldred. I throw away the Shouldred like this, and my opponent does the cool play of sacking lands. That's lethal damage, so that's not going to work. So instead, Rotting Regisaur probably needs to go in front of that. This kills all of the Fiend Artisans but leaves my opponent with this so close to death. So this just leaves me dead still, right, with blocks like this. So what if my opponent doesn't realize the Elvish Reclaimer thing? And then I just... Now this is 10, 11, 12. Shit! This turn is so hard. Do I have to throw away Opposition Agent? And do that? Then I can take 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... This way. All the Fiend Artisans are dead? Yeah, let's try this. Okay, so this is the Allosaurus Shepherd activation. Okay, yeah, there's the whole Elvish Reclaimer thing. The Fiend Artisans are dead. My Opposition Agent is gone, which is a problem. Now Green Sun is live. Yet. Okay. That's not great. There's three elves in play. All right, so I can always yield to Shouldred. I will do this whole Sylvan Library thing, which is going to get me two more life. I'll absolutely just put those on top. Seven, fourteen, seven, fourteen, eighteen. If I attack with everything, my opponent has to chump block. On the back end, I would take three, six, seven, eight, nine which is lethal. So I have to try to blow my opponent out in combat when they go for an Alpha Strike. Uh, if this can become Dryad Arbor, I need to actually Edict now. Um, actually, no, I don't need to do that, right? Because I can just Sudden Edict in response to a fetch. It has split second. No, I can wait. This game has been really cool. I guess Dryad Arbor being my opponent's draw from turn is super punishing for not casting the Sudden Edict immediately. Oh, that sucks. So that's the Crater Hoof. My opponent's creatures will get plus four, plus four, and Trample. There will be four of them. That's not great. I believe that means I am dead. That is a pretty brutal top deck. I'm starting to think they don't have the hoof, because this is taking a long time. Oh, shit, they do have the hoof. Okay. All right. Nine, nine. These are seven eights. So is there a way that I survive this? Yes, I can. There's not a way where I think I survive the next turn very easily, though. Right? I can take seven. Oh, shit, the trample. Yeah, the trample beats me here. Ugh. Wild game. I don't think I like the side of the matchup that I'm on here. My opponent has Collector Oof, so boarding into Leyline Helm is maybe not ideal. 
you know, like Plague Engineer, Assassin's Trophy is probably necessary. I'm not the biggest fan of Turok here. And probably not him to Turok either. I I think, unfortunately, I am kind of the aggro deck here. Because in the worlds where I don't have Opposition Agent, I think my opponent has the better endgame. I mean, it was real good last game. And I will main phase it on my turn. With any land drop, I have multiple Douthy Voidwalkers that don't have to be risked in combat. Um, so I think I'm into this hand. Let's just drop the Opposition Agent and hope we draw a Black Mana Source in roughly, roughly two turns. I don't mind, like, just taking a turn to Thought Seize. Like, that's totally fine with me. Yeah, this is okay still. The Opposition Agent will just dome for three points a turn until my opponent makes a land drop and produces anything resembling a respectable blocker. Multiple Elvish Spirit Guides? Huh. Am I taking one of those? Feels like I'm just taking one of those. If I draw another Thought Seize, I would love to take the other one and just make it very unlikely. Yeah, shit, that that exact thing doesn't happen. Okay. Still get three points of damage in safely right now. My opponent can't fetch Dryad Arbor because of the opposition agent. Um, multiple spirit guides is wild. <clears throat> um, I've got six points of damage right now per turn. But this guy's cradle is like absolutely gonna fuck me up. Um, Shouldred's cool. This attack is still safe as of right now. Um, so here's to hoping my opponent cannot natural order me next turn. Because if they cannot order, sorry, if they cannot natural order me next turn, it becomes very hard to do it on the following turn because they probably have to like jump block opposition agent. Two mana for an Elvish Visionary, which means that my opponent can Natural Order next turn. Uh, well, I guess, actually, with Opposition Agent in play, the Natural Order doesn't matter, so I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Yeah, so this just kills with Douthy Voidwalkers next turn, then. I don't think I want to trade Opposition Agent away for both of those right now. Opponent goes to two. I'll drop a Sylvan Library. And I am very willing to dink deep, drink deep from that Sylvan Library if I get another turn. Okay, cool. Uh, we we mized a win with Opposition Agent there. Spirit Guides, though. Spirit Guides are pretty wild. This is a hand of Magic the Gathering cards. The double Chromox is basically a mulligan to six, but it has Sylvan Library to help get me out of that. I think it's better to just mulligan this hand, though. Because, like, my Dark Ritual hands can be so good. This is not one of those. I'll go to five here. Opponent also going to five. Uh, this is Thoughtseize into turn two Opposition Agent with Sudden Edict backing it up. Given that I have no green mana, both of these cards go back. Opponent has mulligan to five as well. All right, so keep. Trophy and Library go back. See what we're working with here. I could get Thought Seized here. It is an elf. Oh, Rotting Regisaur is very nice follow-up. Like, that is a finisher for once I start picking apart my opponent's hand. Visionary is more valuable than Reclaimer here because I'm going to play Opposition Agent next turn. So that's fine. Oh, I assume my opponent drops that forest, plays the Reclaimer. One unknown card. That's A-OK -okay with me. I will be playing the Opposition Agent on my turn, so my opponent cannot find a Cradle. This hand is stacked. Right. Opposition Agent, right now. And then I get to, like, Plague Engineer this, Sudden Edict away that, play Reggie. I'll be holding off on Reggie for as long as humanly possible. Straight up, cast an Elvish Spirit Guide. That's good against Sudden Edict. I cannot lie to you. All right, I'm going to deal with myself so much damage with Ancient Tomb. 
Okay, no, that's that's good enough for my opponent. Um, GG's. Neat match. Today's video is sponsored by Cardsphere.com. Cardsphere is a service that allows you to buy, sell, and most importantly, trade your magic cards with other people and game stores from around the world. As you can see here, they are doing a lot of business. They only take a very small fee, 3%, and if you decide you want cash instead of cards, you can also get paid out via PayPal for a small cut. P.S. They also have articles, so please consider checking them out. Um... This is a hand? This is a Magic the Gathering hand. You can just play a Hymn to Turok on turn 1, a Hymn to Turok on turn 2, a Douthy Voidwalker on turn 3. Um... I don't really know how to evaluate this one. Kind of like a five card hand, but it's a really fucking fast five card hand. I believe it is correct to mulligan this hand. I'm going to keep it for science. This hand is interesting enough, and I haven't played anything that looked quite like this before. Um, that I think I just kind of want to see what play pattern results from doing this. Oh, opponent's on a combo deck. Uh, this is gonna be okay. Probably a storm deck of some variety. Thoughtseize is really good here. Alright, opponent has taken the him. I will get to put a Douthy Voidwalker in play and hopefully follow it up with something else cool in the not too distant future. Alright, Swamp is not what I'm looking for, but it's totally fine for now. I took an LED out of my opponent's hand. I have a respectable clock and technically a piece of interaction like the the graveyard can matter for like cabal therapy type cards um and it will stop like echo nonsense from happening um i intend on attacking with my Douthy void walker every turn not necessarily just leaving it up um and i'm gonna hold my ancient tomb in hand to uh bluff opposition agent okay there's another fetch land okay bluff failed See what my opponent does. Now that they know that the fetch is clear, they'll definitely fetch twice. Alright. Three mana. Four mana. Alright. So this is Infernal Tutor, or what is presumably Ad Nauseum. And Ad Nauseum from 13 is not guaranteed, but it's pretty safe. Graveyard being off helps a little bit there, because the Cabal Rituals and such are worse, and Past in Flames is off. Oh, it's... Oh shit, it's Eve. Okay, that's not good for me. Five, not well. This can't block. Can I infernal tutor for some wild shit. No, I can't get held bent. Shoot. Yeah, that is that is going to beat me here. All right, concede. Do not regret keeping for science. Like hand was going pretty respectably. Um, I'm interested in. Leyline Helm versus this opponent. I'm not really interested in playing Sudden Edict. Like, that's a card that I want out of my deck. So that's the first four slots. And I don't really think Sylvan Library matters that much. I don't really want to pay the life here. I think I'm just going to play a mono black deck for this round. Assassin's Trophy is not crazy. Plague Engineer is also not crazy. Uh, this hand's super awkward. I don't really have the mana to do anything. Like, I have double Leyline, but I don't cast Children, and I don't cast Turok, Ict, or Douthy Voidwalker. Uh, that's also a no. Let's go to five. Uh, the issue with this is... I don't have black black unless I use chrome mox, and if I use chrome mox, it's like going to four. I think I have to keep this hand. It is just incredibly awkward for me. Um, just kind of have to Yu-Gi-Oh heart of the cards, hope to draw a black source off the top of my deck here. Uh, that's kind of awkward. What do I want to do about this? The veil's really good against my him. Thoughtseize is really good against my him and my Douthy Voidwalker. I think I'm just going to take the Thoughtseize here. 
don't think I can lose another card right now reasonably and win the game. So if my opponent just like does Misty and pass, I gain them not casting Preordain here. Um, which is kind of huge. But I really I really needed a black land to just get this into play and start doing my nonsense. And we just kind of hope that we can cast him at a point when my opponent does not have Veil of Summer available. Bottom, bottom. Yeah, see, like, this doesn't cast Veil of Summer. Uh, Dark Ritual. Despite getting me to 4 mana, only casts one of these cards. I think it has to be the him right now. I could cast him right now while shields are down. Alright, him you. My fucking Yavamaya. You got me. Hoisted by my own petard. Ah. Should have played Douthy Voidwalker there. Alright. That's on me. I don't really know that I win this game just by playing out Douthy Voidwalker, though. Like, after mulliganing to 5, I really needed to high roll and hit well. And I didn't. So, like, now the graveyard's stacked for Cabal Ritual. Opponent has natural tendrils in hand. Well, I guess if I played out Douthy Voidwalker, opponent wouldn't have been at threshold. I still think, based on the looks of how this is going here... Oh, fuck, with an Adnaz. Oh, yeah, I'm so dead. The storm is six already, seven, eight, nine tendrils. Yeah, uh, writing, writing is on the wall. I will concede there. Um, but that was a very bad play on my end. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com. Moxfield is a deck building website for Magic the Gathering that has a lot of really cool functionality. So if you are looking to store your decks online and be able to subdivide them into all sorts of folders and organizational systems, this site may be for you. In addition to just storing deck lists, you can also keep track of which cards you have by clicking nice little bubbles next to the cards. All right, we are playing against Sliver Master Daniel Noons, and I think I'm keeping my hand. It's a little awkward, because Opposition Agent is not good versus my opponent. I think I'm going to keep with my game plan being Urborg Thoughtseize on turn one into Kicked Turok on turn two, Sudden Edict on turn three. Oh shit, Force of Will. Oh, that Force of Will is so good, and it's redundant too. Um... Maybe I just take the Lord here. This th this is not the sort of hand that I wanted to see. Now, notably, my opponent is Mana Light right now. So that may work in my favor. It was Plated Sliver. How am I getting around this Force of Well? Am I just playing Sudden Edict this turn? Get rid of that? Maybe. Is casting either one of these big cards into my opponent's nonsense doesn't really seem great. I'd love to just draw an Ancient Tomb or something like that. Just a third land helps. That second land is going to be unfortunate for me. That means that future slivers can be deployed. I, I, need, to, I need to kick this and get some slivers out of my opponent's hand. Like, their start is slow, but it's not that bad. Oh no, multiples. And now they are evasive. Okay, Ancient Tomb's cool. I always play that. I think this turn is Dark Ritual into Ict Turok, which should get Force of Will, Blue Card, and One Life. Yes. Okay. Now I can actually resolve... The Shouldered next turn, unless my opponent draws Wastelands, and these Slivers haven't scaled up yet, so Shouldered might be able to offset the damage that my opponent is doing. Uh, but I'm super scared of this matchup. Also, I think my opponent is unquestionably the best Slivers player in the world, so that doesn't help my cause. Another Dark Ritual. So that's three, four, five, six. Three, four, five, six. Okay, that's not both of these. 
So that means we are just doing Shouldred this turn. Am I supposed to use a Dark Ritual to not take life loss? That seems reasonable. Let's do that. I think that's worth the card. Could be wrong, though. Like, I don't know how much damage I'm going to take because it's just, like, totally variable. Like, I can take 4 this turn, or I can take 7 this turn, depending on whether or not my opponent draws a lord that buffs my opponent's, like, creature's powers. There's also worlds where my opponent leaves back one creature to block shoulder it and then bounce. I guess there's also worlds where my opponent just doesn't attack, so I can't attack with shoulder it. Alright, we are getting in there. I will take my 4, nothing I can do about that. Okay, it's Sliver Hive, which doesn't do anything right now. My life for Shouldred. None of these have Flash. Means I will just crash in for my 4. Opponent goes to 13. And then 11 after that draw. I will take 4 more in combat, presumably. Yeah, yep, that is happening. I am down to 10. Breaking Sliver is totally fine. At end step, I will play an Opposition Agent, which does not cost me any life off the Ancient Tomb. Alright, I go to 12. My opponent has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If they draw a Lord, 6, 7, 8, 9, which is not lethal. I think that means I am interested in attempting attacks here. My opponent can block Shouldred with the Striking Sliver in order to save two life. Yeah, that is what we're going to see here. So the first strike damage happens. Oh, not willing to bounce here. Two life is valuable. Uh, then I'll play out a Swamp and pass the turn. When it goes to six after this draw. Yeah, no pre-combat Lord played out or anything. All right, Gale Rider Sliver comes crashing in. Or one point of damage. And there's an Aether Vial. Okay. So Opposition Agent can't really attack in because of first strike. Uh, no cards in hand. So Shouldered can att attack in. Shouldered gets chump blocked. And I probably win next turn. Alright, there's Shouldered. I want to attack with this right now. The other Striking Sliver goes this turn. That's a different story. See if my opponent wants to bounce this one here. They don't even have to use mana for it next turn. They can Aether Violet back in. Uh, but, you know, every time they pay two life, that's just a turn off the clock because of Shouldred. I guess I could have attacked with the opposition. Or no, first, first strike. Yeah, it wouldn't have mattered there. All right. Play out of Forest. Opponent goes to two. I can't really think of what beats me from here because they can't just deal 13 in any way all right super happy to win game one because i'm scared of this deck opposition agent is not good i don't think him to turok is particularly good on the draw don't think i can super afford the life loss of sylvan library but if i do get it with shouldred just a lot of life just six life a turn unchecked unsure about that i'm not the biggest fan of turok here i'm mostly thinking about whether or not i want to try to board in eight cards for leyline helm i like absolutely need to play plague engineer if i don't do the sylvan library thing that is all of these cards so that i can have a combo finish so i can just kill my opponent in a turn when i need to and then I'll just, like, play an Assassin's Trophy or two as removal spells. Still just keeping Rotting Regisaur because it's just a big booty creature that can pivot a game. It's fine. I don't know if my opponent's still going to have Force of Will against me. I, I, I just don't know what the Sliver sideboard looks like right now. Relevant to the current situation. So this could be turn two, play Talthy Voidwalker, turn three, attempt a kill. If my opponent doesn't have a force of will or force of will effect, that's very good. I think I'm going to keep this. I don't think it works all of the time. But 
Oh shit. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm into that. Chromox. Imprint Sudden Edict. Three, four, five, six. This isn't a turn one kill, so I will just play out a Douthy Voidwalker this turn. Alright, no no soul read force of will there. Feels kinda like my opponent has a force. Alright, Predatory Sliver. My Douthy Voidwalker cannot be blocked. Oh shit. That's not bad. I can play that out before my other nonsense. So let's fetch. Play out a Bayou. Play out a Douthy Voidwalker. Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual. Tempt Helm. Okay, there is the Force pitching a Telekinetic Sliver. So now I just try to straight up race my opponent. I have 6, 12, 18. I have a three turn clock. Uh, I just have to see if that's faster than my opponent's clock. Uh, it is going to be real fucking tight. Uh, it just depends on how many lords they have and what I end up drawing. Okay. Good news for Phil fans. Uh, opponent not having just a fistful of creatures there probably means good news for me. Um, but if my opponent can put two creatures into play this turn, I probably die before them. Uh, so we'll see. I'm down to 10. Oh shit, they're flooding. That's real good. Alright. Crash in. On it goes to 4. I'll play Plague Engineer on Sliver. Which I think puts my opponent out of range of aggroing me. Under any circumstance. Oh yeah, okay, we have gotten the GG's from the opponent here. Woo! We're two and one. All right, we're playing against a Yorian deck of some kind. I think I'm gonna keep my hand. The Urborg makes the multiple ancient tombs much less awkward. I'm gonna hope that we're not playing against a Wasteland deck. Um, I think I'm just gonna lead on Verdant Catacombs and pass here. Play around Wasteland at least for turn one. We do unfortunately have to play out Urborg on turn two in order to uh, do anything cool. Okay, second fetch land. And if my opponent just plays life from the loam here and returns those two lands to hand to pad their hand from him to Torak, I'm in such bad shape. Fuck me. Uh, so this also makes Wasteland Recursion much harder on me, right? This is getting a basic. Man. I am not pleased. What if I don't kick Turok? I just like fucking play Turok this turn. Then play him next turn. Save Shouldered for a bit later. My opponent's like four color and doesn't actually have lightning bolts. Turok now isn't actually that bad. Yeah. Yeah, this is giving up value, but, like, maybe sets up a threat that's really hard for my opponent to remove. Then Minsk and Boo will happen, and I'll cry myself to sleep, but, like, you know, whatever. We can't have it all, right? Ah, that's the wasteland. Oh, this game is so fucking over. Oh, yeah. This game is so bad for me. So now, uh, I mean, library's cool. Shouldered's cool. Double him next turn is not that cool. Maybe it's cool. All right. Let's attempt a shouldered. It has worked. I don't, I don't feel good about life right now. One's at 18. The recursive wasteland is so incredibly good against what I'm doing. If my opponent has the soul read, oh, wow, fuck. If my opponent has the soul read about how good removing this Urborg is, it's not great for me. Oh, okay, we're, we're just already at this. Sure. Finds my opponent the green mana. Uh, 
bring back Uro next turn, and I don't have a sudden edict to deal with that right now. I also haven't done anything scary enough that my opponent has to counterspell yet. So that's also a thing. What are you doing? What is this? Are we Loman? Yeah, we're Loman. Uh, only returning two cards, though. So I'm starting here, no matter what. All right. Sort of a Swords and a Mystic Sanctuary. Do I want to him again? Or do I just want to play a fucking library? I think I'm interested in hymning again. It's just not great versus these cards like Uro, Terminus in there. Um, but I think if I'm going to try to scale this Turok to be outside of like Minsk and Boo range or be able to beat Uro in combat, I have to just do this here while I can. All right, there's a Life from the Loam, which gets to return Mystic Sanctuary, which gets to put Expressive Iteration on top. Have you have you heard this talk from me enough times that we kind of know how this goes, right? Ugh. Well, good thing I didn't play out Sylvan Library. Finding a Ponder. All right, Mystic Sanctuary. Terminus on top. Uh... This game is over. I was all in on this Turok. It takes a while for me to lose, but I've lost this. Um, like I'll play out the Sylvan Library, I guess, in an attempt to pretend like I'm not dead. But, like... Opponent has Wasteland, Life from the Loam, and Mystic Sanctuary, which means that they can Wasteland their own Mystic Sanctuary in order to rebuy things from their graveyard at will. So, like, my Rotting Regisaur is not nearly as good of a threat as it looks like. An opponent has, like, Uro as well, which just beats it in combat. Uh, so life's bad. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, this whole... EI Mystic Sanctuary loop bullshit that is present both in the control decks and in the Delver decks is so much for a fair deck to try and overcome. So, like, the difference between, like, my Sylvan Library, which is a fantastic source of card advantage, and EI is that, like, EI is more or less an immediate draw to that does not require 8 life. Okay, yeah. Now my opponent can wasteland me into Oblivion. We'll use Sylvan Library's ability. We'll put those on top. Not do very much right now. I'm fine with fetching a basic to shuffle here. Play Ancient Tomb. Tap that for regular old black mana. Play Rotting Regisaur. And I'll Sudden Edict my opponent after their draw step. I don't want them... Oh, man. Might have just played around Determinus. Or rather, I might make my opponent have mana to play around. Or to cast their Terminus. Alright, Pyroblast in Exile. That's fine. Oh, a second Mystic Sanctuary. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Alright. Uh, I think it... At this point, with, like, this Uro coming back, multiple Mystic Sanctuaries, Life from the Loam, stripping my lands, I I think I'm going to value my time and just move on. Um, Leyline in, Carpet in, Helm in, probably have to play Assassin's Trophy or Plague Engineer to help with Minsk and Boo. Then I have to figure out how the hell am I playing the early game. I don't think I want to be on Regisaur versus this deck. I don't know how many Sudden Edicts to play. I'm hoping that between Dalthy Voidwalker and Leyline, I stop Uro from happening that way. I can get rid of all of my discard if I want, but the discard is what helps me force through this bullshit that wins me the game. Maybe I can't play all the hymns or all the opposition agents or something. Go with him out. Keep one to supplement the thought seizes. It's also possible I could go down on Dark Ritual. I don't know if my matchup approach is good here. It's just so hard to keep up with my opponent's endgame engine. And just, like, the discard is inherently bad versus the expressive iteration you are in deck. 
All right. Um, I think my opponent disconnected, but is now back. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this hand. Absolutely utter nonsense. Start with a ley line and pray. So how much mana is this? Three, four, five, six, seven. I can use two of these to attempt to turn one win. And if it doesn't work, we try again a little bit later. Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual. Elm. Target you. X is one. Oh shit, opponent's gonna let me see their whole deck. Fantastic. Alright. Uh, good stuff. So. Um... Try to make this big enough that I can take an appropriate screenshot of it. This is an absolute fucking mess. Uh, yeah. Throw that on the other screen. Let's look at some highlights. <laughs> yeah. Opponent says that was seriously sick hand. Yeah. It's pretty rare to do that, but it is super cool. Alright, so... A one force of negation. That yeah, looks like one force of negation. So opponent has five forces, three endurances, four arrows. They're kind of light on removal. No, no, it's just scattered all over the place. Okay. So I've got Narset, Minskin Boo. Is it Staticaster? I guess Is it Staticaster is an out to Turok before a counter is on it. Yeah, these Turoks are hard to remove. They're kind of light on wind conditions that aren't Uro. Four Minskin Boo, basically, and a couple of Endurances. Do I want Plague Engineer on Hamster or Assassin's Trophy for the game on the draw? I am legit not sure if I do. Like, I'm very unsure. Like, I could maybe get rid of Opposition Agents. This is all the mana in the world and nothing to do with it. I think this one just has to be a Mulligan. This is probably a keep. It doesn't look good, and it's, like, super bad if Chromox eats a Prismatic Ending. But I think it's a keep. I think I just pitched the most expensive card here. Despite the fact of how good that card is later on in the game. It's possible I'm supposed to just pitch the Yavamaya there, though, honestly. Because, like, the Yavamaya makes my opposition agent noticeably worse. That's real good. Um, I think I'm just on put Opposition Agent under this and play out a bunch of Douthy Voidwalkers and hope they kill my opponent. So when Library becomes the backup. Like, it's just really awkward, like, having Opposition Agent alongside Yavamaya with, like, the texture of this hand. This is a 3-2 bear. This is a 3-2 bear with Flash. And I'm good with that. I don't think I play it out at end. Oh, shit. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Is it working? Oh, shit. It's working. Um, How do I want to do this? Oh, my gosh. I can take a better deck photo. That's what I can do. That's what matters here. Fantastic. Um, the opponent has an EI in hand. Maybe a prismatic ending. Already used the swords. They're up to three terminus now. I would like to just take an untapped land. Take something like a taiga that just makes green. Maybe a tropical island, actually. Take a tropical island there. No, actually, taigo. Actually, mm -hmm. a lot of other things that make more sense. Okay, yeah, there's a prismatic ending to get rid of my chrome box. That's fine. There's a helm. Good things are coming my way. Um, yeah, I definitely took the wrong land because of my Yavamaya, though. My opponent's at 16. I guess I can't cast Douthy Voidwalker. Um, so I guess that means I am doing this for now. My opponent just used a Prismatic Ending last turn. So they're a little bit less likely to just have a second one immediately. Three white mana. Oh, that's just Yori into hand. Good news for Phil fans. Yes, I will absolutely just nom 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 nom. Yeah, super, super interested in just taking the damage here. 
Can't play multiple spells super well. So I'm always doing this. Put my opponent to 13. I think I just play Helm this turn. It's a sufficiently scary card that my opponent might need to counter or otherwise deal with. Because otherwise Douthy Voidwalker potentially just wins the game next turn. Yeah, Uro is fine. Very good. Ooh, that's another land that is not a fetch land. Alright, let's see what we're working with. Not the black mana that I wanted. I'm going to put the second Sylvan Library. Well, maybe put one Thoughtseize back. A four life just to get this card off the top. I want to play Douthy and try to win in the same turn. You just cast Turok. I don't know, putting a second creature on board is awkward in the face of, like, Brainstorm Terminus. Alright. Oh, maybe it isn't because of Helm, though. Alright, there's Turok. There's Thought Sees You. Oh, right. Loam. Take Expressive Iteration here. So the coast is, in theory, clear for next turn. Um, but I should have played out the second library. Alright, three damage, and we'll attempt the win next turn. Get rid of that. Yeah, that's fine. Opponent has one unknown card. Let's see what the Sylvan Library brings. I'd like it to bring a black mana. Oh, these cards are not good. I believe I will just go ahead and go for the kill here. There's, there's one unknown card. It feels pretty safe. Put back Thoughtseize. Play line, play land, attempt Douthy Voidwalker, activate a helm for X is 1. An opponent cannot cast an Endurance, so I think we're good. Um, GG's, we're up to 3 and 1. Alright, final round, we're very likely to be playing against Doomsday here. Um, and this is a fantastic hand for if that is the case. Um, notably, there is this, um, like, Divining Witch, Thassa's Oracle deck thingy that's been floating around as well. Um, I could see that as the sort of thing that my opponent wants to play to. Um, but we'll probably figure out this turn what my opponent is on. I will take the Doomsday. Fantastic. That is a got em situation. Alright, there's Cycling the Street Wraith. There's Tarn. Alright, um, this will be Ancient Tomb Pass for Opposition Agent. And next turn I get Shouldred, uh, which should be very hard to beat. Alright, there's the Underground Sea that I know about. And I'm going to value the damage to my opponent's life total more than I value sitting on Opposition Agent here. Fantastic. Very good. Okay. So the big question here is, do I want Leyline Helm versus my opponent for the post-sideboard games? I think the answer is no. I think just killing my opponent is good, right? Like, Rotting Regisaur and Shouldred are an absolute shit ton of pressure on my opponent's life total. I probably don't need four Sudden Edicts. My opponent has, like, two shoulders in the sideboard that I super care about. So I have four shoulders and Sylvan Libraries to make them cracked. Carpet may be good enough. Carpet helps me get to triple black for Picked Turok and four mana for shouldered faster. Probably gonna play Carpet over, like, two Edicts, I think. I also could, like, not play four Sylvan Library and just keep all of the Edicts hedging against shouldered. Sylvan Library is just, like, very hard to play. It's like, I would play Douthy Voidwalker, or him, or maybe even just a 2-1 to rock over Sylvan Library a lot of the time. Let's, let's do this. Actually, no, let's do this, actually. That hedges against Shouldred while also being able to hit, like, LED-type stuff, and Assassin's Trophy is better under Chromebox than Sudden Edict is. This is an acceptable, but very slow hand. I don't know that this is good enough on the draw. 
I would really like a Thought Seize or a Dark Ritual or an Opposition Agent in the hand. I think I'm going to fish a little bit here. This is a better hand than the last one, I think. Turn 2 Opposition Agent, I think is much stronger than turn 2 him. I'll just throw back a Douthy Voidwalker here. All right. We're chilling. We're chilling. No end of turn fetch. Okay, now we're seeing some movement. And they know I don't have the Dark Ritual plus Opposition Agent. This will be Cabal Ritual into Doomsday. My opponent to 9. And they probably win next turn. See if I can come up with something cheeky to do. I can just play Rotting Regisaur to make this a one-turn clock if my opponent Street Wraiths. I think that's better than hoping that they did a fetch line when they obviously know to play around Opposition Agent. So we'll see how this goes. I expect to be dead. I expected the game on the draw to be very difficult. Okay, yeah, so this was a one-turn clock versus a Street Wraith. Uh, but there is the Thassa's Oracle, and I do not have a removal spell that I can play that beats that. Um, so I get to try again now. Oh, I should have looked at all my opponent's exiled cards. That's a misplay on my end. <clears throat> um, I think I will just be submitting as is. I wish I had, like, some Inquisitions or something like that to bring in here. The mana is awkward in this hand. This is turn one Thoughtseize, turn two Thoughtseize, which is fine and good. But I cannot cast any of my threats without specifically drawing a black land. I think I can do better. This is not better. So I will be mulliganing to five. Ah, uh, yes. I get rid of a carpet of flowers and I guess a sudden edict here. Done. It's Bayou. I don't love my odds this game, but things can happen. Uh, I think it is Douthy Voidwalker first in this instance. Oh, I gotta force a will. Pitching a Thassa's Oracle. Thought sees you. Um, I will be taking the Ponder here. That card digs deeper and gives a shuffle. I'm into Ponder. Wow. Um, a little, little surprised to see the horse on the Douthy Voidwalker. But I guess my opponent just thought, like, if they did that, I can't produce a reasonable enough clock to actually just win the game. All right. So it's all, it's all on the table here. I'm playing that out to play around a daze. I can play most cards other than Shouldered next turn. And we'll just kind of see how this goes. We'll also see if my opponent wants to brainstorm this turn. If I was in their shoes, I probably would, so that I could shuffle now. Nope, that one Thassa's Oracle went to exile, so their Doomsday Pile can't actually contain two attempts at going off like I assume their previous one did. Nope, there's a fetch. Are we going now? Cool Doomsday right now? No. Okay. The personal tutor for Doomsday. Opponent grabbed a basic island. Oh shit. Uh, so the top card of my deck has to be live or I lose next turn. I can just lose to an Edge of Autumn Street Wraith line very easily. Alright. No shouldered in for this game. Opponent's at 9. I'll add some black mana. I'll pass the turn with this land in my hand. And there's any number of piles that beat me here. I'm not going to take the mental energy to like walk through which specific pile my opponent might have done that can play around certain stuff that I have. Okay, we're chilling. Alright, I get another draw. I will keep both these cards in hand. I just have to have the fear in the heart of my opponent here. Alright, we're doing, we're doing this the slow way. Oh, shit. Wonder if that wins. That might win. Like black. Attempt to... I guess blow up the island? Yeah, let's attempt to blow up the island. Failed to find. Doesn't mean this game's over. There's Street Wraith. Fuck. 
All right, there is the Thassa's Oracle. I don't know whether or not my opponent could have drawn another card. Like, I could have held up the Assassin's Trophy specifically for this, but if they didn't build their pile... Oh, fuck, I could have just, like, fucking checked. That was stupid on my end. All right. GG. Yeah, I messed that up. I should have checked. I could have literally checked to see if they had Lotus Petal in that pile and then maybe turned that into a 4-1 instead of a 3-2. All right, um, overall thoughts on the deck list. Not bad. Um, I'm relatively happy with the interaction between Shouldred and Sylvan Library, but it's rough on the life total to be playing Ancient Tomb, Sylvan Library, Thoughtseize all at the same time, and it's also rough on the mana base to be playing Ancient Tomb with Black, 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 or a whole bunch of Black, Black cards, and both of those things were definitely felt throughout the league. This is not a bad deck list. Um, like, this is very much a, a cute interaction that's good enough to be competitive, um, but ultimately, I don't know that this is better than some of the mono black decks running around, and I don't know that this deck... I, I don't know that the interaction between Shouldred and Sylvan Library is better than the interaction between Uro and Sylvan Library, and in fact, I think pretty easily Uro Sylvan Library is better than Shouldred Sylvan Library, um, although the interaction is, like, super cool. Um, so I don't know how competitive this is at the end of the day, but it's definitely competitive enough that, like, it would be totally fun to play in some leagues. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button on the way out. It helps out a lot. I hope you have a great rest of the day. See ya.